Hi again, everyone. Today, we're going to continue learning about the solar system, and particularly, we're going to be learning about types of space rocks. If you need some help or you just have questions, you should send me an email. My email address is on the screen. It's rcrawford at jcpsmail.org. If you haven't already, take a moment and gather your materials, pause the video. You'll need to find a pencil, your science notebook, and some color pencils. Let's do a very quick review. So, first question today is going to be name the planets in our solar system beginning with the one closest to the sun. Now, I'm going to give you a hint. I gave you a silly sentence last time. The silly sentence was, my very excited mother just served us nachos. So, see if you can, uh, maybe in the margin of your notebook, see if you can answer this question. What are the planets in our solar system, beginning with the one closest to the, to the sun? Um, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate to use that silly sentence to help you remember it. I still do. Pause the video when you're ready to continue. Go ahead and restart. All right. Did you get them? Um, my very excited mother just served us nachos, of course. The order of the planets is Venus, excuse me, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So that's the order of the eight planets in our solar system. Let's look at another question. What are the two types of planets in our solar system? Remember, we have the four that are closest to the sun and that are all similar to each other. And we have the four that are farther from the sun that are also similar to each other. So what are those, the names of those two types of planets? Pause the video when you're ready to continue. Please do. Were you able to remember the word terrestrial and Jovian? Remember terrestrial, that's our inner planets, the ones closest to the sun. Terrestrial means Earth-like. And then we have our Jupiter-like planets, or our Jovian planets. And remember, those are the four outer planets, the ones that are far farthest from the sun. Let's take a look at our last question. Are you able to list three ways that terrestrial planets are different than Jovian planets. So you may want to do this in your margin. Go ahead, pause the video, see if you can remember this. Were you able to remember those characteristics? When we talked about terrestrial planets, we said they were smaller. We, of course, said that they're warmer because they're closer to the sun. Their composition is rock and metal. They're made from rock and metal. They have no moons, or some have few moons, and no ring systems. If we compare that to our Jovian planets, remember they were larger, colder. They are not made of rock and metal. They're made of gases and ices. They have many moons. We said that Jupiter uh, has over 70 moons, and all of those Jovian planets have ring systems. I hope you were able to do that. So, here are our lesson objectives for today. But by the end of this video today, you should be able to I want you to be able to list the characteristics of asteroids and meteoroids and explain how they're different. In addition, you need to be able to explain the difference between a meteoroid, a meteor, and a meteorite. Those words all look very similar to me. But you also need to be able to name the location of the asteroids in our solar system. Where do we find them? You should be able to explain what a rogue asteroid is and tell me why study, stu, a scientist stu, study them. And finally, I need you to be able to list the characteristics of a comet and explain basically where most comets are found in our solar system. Let's jump right in. All right, meteoroids versus asteroids. And in reality, I think the most accurate way to describe these is space rocks. Let's start out with meteoroids. So a meteoroid is any, notice the word small is underlined, small, odd-shaped chunk of rock and metal. So all meteoroids are made of rock and metal. Um, they are generally small, meaning under, uh, under 330 feet. Now, you may go 330 feet, that's a football field. You're right. But as compared to the size of a planet and other objects, that's relatively small. But they can also be much, much smaller. They can be the size of a, a grain of dust. But a meteoroid, any small, odd-shaped chunk of rock and metal, Odd shape basically means it's not round. So small, odd shape, chunk of rock and metal, that's a meteoroid. 
And we can see that anything from this, a speck of dust all the way up to a football field across, that would be a meteoroid. So how is that different than an asteroid? Please notice the very first thing, large versus small. Everything else is going to be the same about what an asteroid and a meteoroid are. So an asteroid is any large, odd-shaped chunk of rock and metal. So odd-shaped chunk of rock and metal, check. Large versus small. So let's look. If you're an asteroid, an asteroid is going to be anything from 30 feet across, which is basically 10 yards on a football field, to 580 miles across. So asteroids are much larger than meteoroids. They're still odd-shaped chunks of rock, but they are much, much larger. Asteroids are not large enough to become round, like planets and some dwarf planets are, though. So asteroids and meteoroids, space rocks. This is, um, <clears throat> when we talk about meteoroids, this is one of the things that students generally have questions on. I feel like this diagram does an excellent job of teaching what the difference is between a meteoroid, a meteor, and a meteorite. Okay, so let's jump right in here. Okay, we said that a meteoroid is a small chunk of rock and metal in space. So if we look at our diagram, um, if, if this chunk of rock and metal is hanging out here in space, then we call it a meteoroid. Now, let's suppose that the, the Earth's gravity grabs a hold of that meteoroid and begins to pull it toward Earth, begins to pull it to the ground. Once that meteoroid enters Earth's atmosphere, it's the same chunk of rock and metal. Once it's in Earth's atmosphere, we call it a meteor. Now, um, meteors is not a word that we most often use. I certainly don't. Often we call these meteors shooting stars. We call them shooting stars because as it enters Earth's atmosphere, the friction with the air causes it to um, get very hot and to produce light. So a, <clears throat> when we say shooting stars, we're really talking about a chunk of rock that is falling to Earth and it's getting very hot um, and producing light. So same material in space, we call it a meteoroid. Once it's falling to Earth, though, and it's in Earth's atmosphere, we call it a meteor. What is a meteorite then? Well, eventually, some of these meteors, these chunks of rock and metal, actually impact the surface of the Earth. They land on Earth's surface. It's the same stuff. It's the same chunk of rock and metal. But once it lands on ground, scientists give it a different name. We call it a meteorite. So um, I do want to point out that this is pretty rare. You know, we don't go out chunks. We find shooting stars um, or meteors falling toward Earth um, all the time. But it's not common for us to walk outside and find a meteorite. That's because most meteors are destroyed uh, by Earth's atmosphere. They, they literally burn up. So in space, that chunk of rock and metal, we just call it a meteoroid. Once it begins falling toward Earth and it enters Earth's atmosphere and heats up, we call it a meteor, a.k.a. a shooting star. Same chunk of rock and metal from space. Once it hits the ground, we give it a new name and we call it a meteorite. Okay, all right, so meteoroids, meteors, and meteorites. So when we talk about asteroids, I think that uh, one of the best things to do is to give you some sort of idea on how big these objects are. And I think the easiest way for me to do that, we said that they're anywhere from 30 feet across, which is like 10 yards on a football field, all the way up to 530 miles across. So I found a quick video that I want us to watch together and uh, see if this helps us understand uh, asteroids a little bit. So let me click here on our link and see if this is going to take us to our YouTube video. Okay, so here we are looking at our video now. And we can see that that first asteroid, and that's the name of it, 2008 BC3, is about the size of a human. And we're going to look at increasing bigger sizes of asteroids and compare them to some everyday objects. Whoa, that was a big jump there to Apophis. Um, you can see that Apophis is uh, bigger than the Eiffel Tower. 
Kings Asteroids and her beams uh, in the background there, bigger than the Empire State Building. Some of these asteroids don't have names, they're simply cataloged by numbers. Please notice that they're not round in shape, that they're chunks of rock and metal. Wow, look at that city being dwarfed. Look at that city being dwarfed by some of these objects. We can see that Albert and Phaethon are absolutely much larger. It seems that the bigger asteroids tend to be getting slightly more rounded. Oh, of course not, Ida. You can barely see that city there in the background. So some of these objects, some of these asteroids, are actually very, very, very large. The city is almost gone from sight. So I think they've done a pretty good job of showing us what the surface of asteroids look like. Some of the asteroids um, are somewhat smooth. Wow, look at the sides. Some of these things are almost flat at the sides. Um, so this one looks pretty smooth, Europa. Uh, others seem to be very pitted. Uh, like they have craters on them. Kind of all the way up the palace. Of course, our city's gone now. We're uh, we're getting to be uh, the size of you know, really regions. Ah, we're to a to a dwarf planet now. Wow. So anyhow, I think this video does a pretty good job of. So as you could see from the video, some of the asteroids are really quite enormous. All right, let's stop and think for a moment. So this is a word that some of you have uh, absolutely ran into before. And I'm asking you about what is a rogue asteroid? What is a rogue asteroid? I want you to pause the video and see if you can uh, think about what the word rogue means. What is a rogue asteroid? You'll pause the video when you're ready and you think you know your answer. Uh, if you will just click play again. So before we answer that question, let's take a little bit about where we find asteroids. So if we look at a diagram of our solar system, we find that uh, we have most asteroids. Most of the asteroids in our solar system we find in this narrow band or belt here that we call the asteroid belt. And notice here that this is, this is labeled as the main asteroid belt. We have other smaller belts of asteroids, but most of our asteroids are found here within the asteroid belt. The asteroid belt is located in between the orbits of Jupiter and of Mars, and we generally find the asteroids in this place in our solar system. Now, we, we occasionally have uh, asteroids that are going to get bumped out. Maybe they collide with something else, um, but they get bumped out of this main asteroid belt. Once it's outside of the main asteroid belt, we now call it a rogue asteroid. Okay? So rogue asteroids are sort of interesting because you know, we can we can have objects that would collide with Earth. And when we look at the size of some of those asteroids, you know, you can imagine that uh, an asteroid, uh, a big asteroid that uh, is traveling, you know, 16, 20, 30,000 miles an hour, colliding with Earth, that would be that would be pretty horrific. This has happened in the past. Uh, there is very strong evidence that we've had rogue asteroids collide with Earth, and it has caused several, these, these events have caused several mass extinction. And a mass extinction is just where uh, much of the life on Earth is completely wiped out. In other words, many species become extinct at one time. Uh, as a matter of fact, our last mass, mass extinction was about 65 million years ago when a, an asteroid that was about 50 kilometers across uh, landed in the Gulf of Mexico. That asteroid collision, uh, that rogue asteroid hitting Earth, is is thought to have caused that rapid extinction of the dinosaurs. So on asteroid, uh, that is what wiped out the dinosaurs, a rogue asteroid fighting with Earth. So we like them to stay in that same belt. Now, obviously, uh, today, scientists are going to track those rogue asteroids. They like to know where they are. They like to watch out for these objects that may come close to Earth so that we don't end up like the dinosaurs. So a rogue asteroid, it's just any asteroid that's been bumped out of that main asteroid belt. Another type of space rock that we have to look at is something called a comet. Now, comet 
is a space rock, but not quite as rocky, uh, I guess we'll say, as a meteoroid or an asteroid. So a comet is really just a big chunk of ice and rock and dust that's all been compacted together. So if you're going to find that a comet is mostly made of ice, called icy body. Okay? Comets can be either large or they can be small. They come in various sizes. We might mostly find comets in the cold outer reaches of the solar system. So, you know, if you get near the sun, it's going to be hard for an icy body not to melt. So we mostly find comets in orbit or in the, in the out past those outer planets, out past Uranus. Um, as a matter of fact, our entire solar system is, has this sort of cloud of comets that orbit around it. And there are literally billions and billions of comets that are swarming around our solar system. And mostly that's where they stay. Uh, this is a, uh, it's an image that shows the city of Los Angeles and a comet that we have actually visited. So you can see the city down here, you can see the skyscrapers. So comets can be quite big or they can be, you know, really much smaller than that too. The way I like to have you think about comets is I want you to think of a dirty snowball. If you've ever went outside and tried to make a snowball, and you got a bunch of stuff in it. Um, maybe you picked up some, some uh, bits of uh, dust or you picked up dirt, and maybe you picked up a chunk of rock, things like that. A dirty snowball is a good way to think of a comet. Comets are sometimes called wonders. Uh, you know, they, they like to mostly stay in that outer solar system, uh, that cloud. But sometimes they, they do wander into the inner solar system. They get bumped by another comet, they slide, and they get sort of taken out of their path. And they get pushed into the inner solar system. And when they do, they get closer to the sun. They begin to melt. And we can see here that this, uh, this loose collection of ice and rock and dust is beginning to melt. And it actually forms what's called a comet tail. Comets actually have two tails. Um, but as it begins to melt, we get a comet tail. And that tail is a little bit like uh, the contrails that we see produced by a airplane that we see it flying through our atmosphere. So comets are wanderers. They're chunks of ice, rock, and dust. And as it gets into the inner solar system, they make their way there. They don't get melt. They may get tail. So, big overview of how is our solar system organized. We have our terrestrial planets, the smaller, warmer inner planets. We have in between, we have the asteroid belt where we have those large chunks of rock and metal. Then we have uh, the, our ice giants, excuse me, our gas giants. And then our ice giant planets, those Jovian, those Jovian planets. We have something called the Kuiper belt where we find lots of icy objects like dwarf planets. And then not shown here, we also have that cloud, that swarm of comets around the, that completely surrounds our solar system. So here's your assignment for today. I want you to go back through, I want you to lose the video, and I want you to write definitions for these vocabulary words in your science notebook. Please remember, you can use your science notebook when you take quizzes. I want you to find definitions for asteroid, meteoroid, meteor, Meteorite, comet. In addition, uh, once you finish with your vocabulary, I want you to completely read the article, Life in the Solar System. That's going to be posted in Google Classroom or directly on your USB drive. As you read, I want you to pay attention to text features like those section headings, the paragraph headings. Uh, look for words that are in bold, italics, or highlighted. Really look at those pictures. Take some time and study it and look at the diagram also. So completely read that article about life in our solar system. We'll be using that article next week. Guys, I guess that does it for now. So until next time, stay curious.